robot mother on the repopulation station. She selects one embryo and initiates the process of growing a fetus. The process takes only 24 hours. Soon, a baby girl is born into the world. It's okay, little one. Robot mother welcomes her to the new world. The girl grows up. From your head to your and mother does everything to ensure her happy life. Baby of mine, baby. The girl wonders why there are no other children in the bunker. There used to be, before the wars. The girl doesn't want to be human because humans destroy everything. Humans can be wonderful. Then why did you only make one? Mother decides to show the girl thousands of embryos. Do you think I'll have a brother or a sister? Which one would you like? Both. However, mother claims that raising children is hard work, and she needs to learn many things. Do you think you'll be ready soon? Perhaps. These events take place at the repopulation station after the extinction of humanity. The reserve of human embryos amounts to 63,000. However, almost 38 years after the catastrophe, only one teenage girl, whom mother simply calls daughter, lives on the station with mother. One morning during breakfast, daughter notices a malfunction in mother's right hand. She quickly repairs mother's hand and then heads off to ballet practice. Later, daughter rushes to her ethics class, taught by her mother. Using the example of a transplantation ethics task, they discuss complex medical ethical questions. Daughter can't focus on the philosophical problems, but mother reminds her that an exam is coming up soon and it would be disappointing if her grades turned out not as good as they should be. One night, the power suddenly goes out in the bunker. The frightened girl goes out to find out what happened. It turns out that a mouse has sneaked into the airlock compartment and damaged the electrical cables. Daughter is thrilled to see a living creature because if a mouse made it inside, then there is the possibility of life beyond their bunker. However, mother doesn't share daughter's joy. She believes that the animal could be a carrier of a dangerous infection and burns the mouse in the furnace despite daughter's pleas not to do so. You're disappointed. That's understandable. Mother assures daughter that it is still very dangerous outside, but daughter begins to suspect that mother is hiding something from her. Mother disinfects the airlock compartment and orders daughter to take her pajamas to the laundry room. After some time, daughter brings up the topic of life outside again. She suggests that mother may be mistaken about the danger beyond the bunker since she has never left it herself. However, mother is certain that her dad is correct and that the planet is still contaminated. She anxiously asks if her daughter is happy because she does everything for her. I am. Have you ever known me to be mistaken? And have you ever experienced overprotective parents during your childhood? Share your stories in the comments. At night, power outages occur once again. Daughter leaves her room and heads towards the airlock compartment to find out what's going on. Behind the armored doors, she hears strange sounds but sees nothing. Despite her fear, daughter puts on a protective suit and opens the doors to the next compartment. Daughter once again hears unsettling sounds but takes off her protective mask and still proceeds to the final door leading outside. An alarmed daughter asks if anyone is outside and suddenly she hears cries for help. A woman begs to be let in and informs that she is wounded. Daughter retrieves another protective suit and leaves it in the first airlock compartment. Once at a safe distance, daughter allows the stranger inside. When the entrance door to the bunker opens, the alarm goes off, and mother rushes to find out what happened. The woman enters the airlock compartment, and daughter asks her to put on the protective suit, otherwise she won't be able to let her in. Daughter hears her mother approaching and decides not to tell her about the guest. She promises to help the woman as soon as she can. And now the injured stranger is forced to hide in the airlock compartment. Would you let a stranger into the bunker? Would you help them or think about your own safety? Write in the comments below. Within a few seconds, mother appears, angered by daughter's disobedience. Daughter explains that she only opened the doors for a second and didn't go outside. That does not excuse your disregard for my authority or for the safety of the others in this facility. 
daughter acknowledges her mistake and promises that it won't happen again. As punishment, mother decides to administer the exam right away to distract daughter from dangerous ventures. In the classroom, mother gives daughter an hour to complete the exam and leaves. Mother explains that she needs to finish her work in the laboratory and then check the airlock compartment. As soon as mother leaves, daughter immediately runs to the airlock compartment where she finds the unconscious stranger. Daughter examines her belongings and finds a weapon in her bag. She takes it for herself and then tries to wake the woman up. The woman regains consciousness and daughter informs her that she will get the necessary medication, but they need to move to a safer place first. Suddenly, the woman removes her mask to drink water. Daughter is surprised and asks how she managed not to get infected, but the woman doesn't understand daughter's concern. By the contagion outside. Who put that in your head? Daughter tells the woman to wait for her in the technical compartment and goes to the medical block. While daughter gathers the medication, mother discovers the protective mask in the airlock compartment. In her haste, daughter knocks over the table with the medicine and, upon hearing mother's footsteps, accidentally injures herself with a shard of glass. Meanwhile, the woman is horrified when she notices mother, who is burning contaminated items. The woman searches for her weapon, but soon realizes that it's gone. Having found the medication, daughter returns to the woman. The frightened stranger demands her weapon back, but daughter reassures her and says that it's safe here. The woman reveals that she sought a droid here, but daughter assures her that it's just her mother. The woman is shocked by this news because similar droids, like mother, shot at her. Soon, mother returns to the classroom and realizes that daughter is not there, prompting her to immediately set out to find her. The woman hears mother's footsteps and quickly grabs the weapon. Fearful, daughter calls for mother's help, but the woman forces her to be silent. Realizing that mother is getting closer, the woman starts shooting at her, but mother retaliates. Daughter begs mother to stop because the woman is scared and needs help. Mother immediately releases the stranger. She is willing to assist the woman and doesn't understand why daughter didn't immediately tell her about her. They take the woman to the medical block, but mother asks daughter to wait outside. Making sure that daughter cannot hear them, mother begins interrogating the woman. The woman still doesn't trust the android and tries to escape from the block. Mother wants to perform a penicillin injection to disinfect the woman's wound, but she refuses to let the android approach her. Mother admits that she is hiding some facts about the outside world from daughter and tries to understand what the woman has already told her. Mother assures the woman that her main task is to care for humanity. If I wanted you dead, all I'd have to do is leave. Mother gives up trying to help the woman and suggests that she take care of herself, then leaves the medical block. Daughter runs after mother and demands to be told the truth. Disarming the stranger, mother confesses that she didn't know about the surviving humans and claims that she is not like the droids outside. Mother explains that she cannot allow the woman to move freely around the station because she still doesn't trust her. The woman almost destroyed her processor with a shot, and who knows what else she could do. Mother treats a wound on daughter's hand and asks if the stranger mentioned any other surviving humans. If there are more people outside, they need to make their way to the station because it's the only safe place for them. Later, daughter takes the woman's bag and examines its contents. Suddenly, she finds a book filled with numerous portraits. Daughter is curious to know who these people are, so she goes to the medical block. The woman is very angry at mother and daughter for locking her up here. Daughter assures her that mother is not what she thinks and that life on the station is not so bad. However, the woman is in no hurry to change her opinion. She tells daughter how the droids burn infants and starved entire families. Shocked, daughter defends mother and says that she wouldn't have done such things. It's just a matter of time. After her conversation with the woman, daughter returns to mother. She apologizes to mother for hiding the stranger and claims that she wouldn't have let her in if she knew she would attack her. Daughter asks mother about her resemblance to other droids and wonders if she has always lived on the station. Mother can't give a definite answer, but she doesn't remember living anywhere else. Meanwhile, the woman's condition worsens and daughter and mother rush to her. Mother insists on extracting the bullet, but the woman adamantly refuses to let the android approach her. In that case, daughter volunteers to perform the surgery instead of mother, and the stranger reluctantly agrees. Under mother's guidance, daughter chooses the best method to extract the bullet. However, the woman vehemently rejects anesthesia and barely tolerates the wound cleansing. I have to drill this into the bullet in order to pull it out. It'll hurt. 
Daughter successfully completes the operation, but her nerves are frayed from the excessive tension. Later, Daughter visits the woman in the medical block and brings her food. The woman expresses gratitude to Daughter for everything she has done, and Daughter admits that she would like to know more about other people. The next day, they continue their conversation, and Daughter once again tries to convince the woman that other people can also come to the bunker, and she and Mother will help them. However, the woman trusts daughter but not mother. The woman tells daughter that she has lived her whole life in a settlement in the mines, and one day, when she and other survivors went out to search for food, they were ambushed by droids. That's how she ended up near the station. She also tells daughter about her foster family and other people she drew portraits of, asking her to keep it all a secret from mother. The woman is convinced that it's safer in the mines and suggests that daughter join her there. Suddenly, their conversation is interrupted by mother, who sends daughter to prepare for the exam. Mother and daughter leave the medical block, and mother reveals that the woman lied about the circumstances of the shootout. The bullet extracted from her body and the bullet mother retrieved from herself are identical. Therefore, it wasn't a droid who shot the woman but another person. Mother forbids daughter from being alone with the woman, considering her dangerous. While daughter carries out her tasks, mother carefully examines the contents of the woman's bag and then places a locator inside it. Daughter finally completes the exam, and as a reward for her excellent results, mother offers her the opportunity to choose a new member for their family on her own. Meanwhile, the woman secretly crafts a weapon in the medical block. Suddenly, without entering the block, daughter demands an explanation of who actually shot her. However, the woman immediately questions mother's words. Daughter didn't compare those bullets herself, so she can't know the truth. During the night, daughter sneaks into the storage room and confirms that the bullets are indeed different. She also discovers empty compartments from which embryos were taken and the failed exam results of her sisters. Additionally, daughter looks into the furnace and finds human remains. Clearly, mother was destroying the imperfect children. After all the horrifying revelations, daughter is filled with horror. She returns to the woman and admits that she was right about everything. Daughter agrees to escape from the bunker, but only if they take her brother with them. The next morning, daughter gathers the necessary items for their escape, but mother catches her off guard. Daughter informs her that she is preparing for her brother's arrival and feels very nervous. Mother explains how to prepare formula for a newborn and then suddenly locks daughter in the kitchen. Mother goes to the woman and informs her that she knows everything about their plans thanks to the locator. The woman attacks mother, trying to disable her. Meanwhile, daughter freezes the glass with liquid nitrogen, smashes it with a cylinder, and escapes outside. Then she activates the fire alarm to distract mother. Daughter and the woman run to the airlock, but they can't open it. Mother approaches them, and the woman takes daughter hostage, forcing mother to let them go. Mother doesn't want any harm to come to her daughter, so she opens the airlock and allows them to escape. Outside, daughter sees the scorched fields and realizes that the world is still uninhabitable. She is very angry at the woman for attacking her. The woman says she didn't mean any harm and that they need to find shelter quickly. Come on, we gotta keep moving. Suddenly, a droid ship appears in the sky and they hide from danger in a cornfield. Daughter examines special machines for ecosystem restoration and the woman explains that life was very difficult before their appearance. After a long journey, they find themselves on the seashore. It turns out that the woman doesn't live in the mines with other people, but in a rusty cargo container with a dog. She explains that she escaped from the mines many years ago, and probably none of her acquaintances survived. She hasn't encountered any living people since then. Disappointed, Daughter realizes that she was simply used and wants to go back despite the woman's warnings. Daughter reaches the station, where she is met by an army of droids. Daughter announces that she wants to speak with Mother, and they immediately let her through. Armed with an axe, Daughter enters inside. She hears a baby crying and tries to sneak towards the child unnoticed. However, Mother is glad that she has returned and offers her to look at the baby. Mother explains that the droids outside are protecting them from dangerous people. The same species, but you are superior in every way. Suddenly, Mother admits that it was she and her droids who destroyed humanity in order to resurrect it with new perfect people. Furthermore, Mother is just a part of a unified consciousness that controls the other droids and all the machines that prepare the Earth for the arrival of their ideal family. Shocked by the horrifying truth, Daughter tries to save the baby and aims her weapon at Mother. Mother becomes convinced that Daughter is ready to take care of their enormous family and decides to hand over control of the bunker to her. Meanwhile, 
The droids block the entrance to the station and intensify security. Mother directs daughter's weapon towards herself and shoots her own processor, leaving daughter alone with her brother. Meanwhile, in the body of one of the droids, mother finds the woman through the left locator. She asks the woman if she remembers her mother and seemingly hints that she is one of her first failed children. At the station, daughter sings a lullaby to her brother and then sets off to look at thousands of embryos, determined to revive humanity. What do you think? Will daughter manage such a difficult and responsible task? Share your thoughts in the comments below, hit the like button, and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget that the best comments will appear in the next video. Here's the best comment from the previous one. See you soon.